Hello and welcome to The Bobber Checks Out, the demo for The Crimson Diamond. A point-and-click adventure game. Welcome, Maple Mystery. You are, um... You are Miss Mi Minamata? <laughs> well, we're honoured to have you here. Uh, a upcoming point-and-click adventure game with Text Parser? I saw this and I immediately thought, immediately thought, it's Laura Bow One, is what I thought when I looked at this. But with a go left, go, sorry, not go left, go west, go west, go west, sort of Zork-ish text interface. Anyway, let's have a look. We probably should do the tutorial. Welcome to the tutorial room. My name is Nancy Maple. I'll be showing you some of the basics of playing a text parser adventure game. Where did you discover it? Um, a friend recommended it, Maple Mystery, a friend that might end up in chat slightly later. I'll be showing you some of the basics of playing a text parser adventure game. Following the text prompts, at the bottom of the screen, and actually let's up that volume a bit because you guys can't hear that. Even that's still a bit quiet. Uh, we can boost that. Give me a sec. Uh, where are we? Boost that by about that much. Yeah, that's a bit more reasonable. Okay. Following the text... There are jobs here. Oh, thank you kindly for the following, Miss Maple Mystery. Following the text prompts at the bottom of the screen, you will walk through the tutorial. When you first enter a room, it's useful to start by typing, Look! Okay, spacebar opens the prompt, so maybe there should be a little hint of how you open the prompt. I tried enter and was surprised that it wasn't enter, but look. When you type look in a room, the game will describe important features. You see a cupboard and a green door. The game will also list the other characters that are in the room. Jack is here. Talk man or look woman will work too if you're having trouble with names. <laughs> That's, that is very nice because I am horrible at remembering names. Type Look Jack to learn more about him. You have the sound effects turned up. You might hear a score sound. Well done. This will indicate you are accomplishing something in the game. The sound will only play the first time you perform the action. Look man. Jack is a tall, lean man. You need to update this a bit? Don't stress, it's only a demo. Uh, with a shiny bald head, he is Mr. Richard's employee, and is in charge of cooking, cleaning, gardening, and a myriad of other tasks the lodging might require. He's weary, but still seems to be in decent spirit. Jack is somewhere in his 40s. You know what? I should probably be a little bit smaller here. Let's make me a little more out of the way. Jack is here to help us with the tutorial. How do you do? Looking at characters at different points in the game may give you additional information. Try Talk to Jack to see what he has to say. What if we try Speak with Jack? You can't use Speak, okay? Talk to Jack. Hello Jack, my name is Nancy Maple. Nice to meet you, Nancy. You can ask me about this tutorial. Type Ask Jack About Tutorial. Ask About Tutorial will also work. What if we try Talk to Jack About Tutorial? Type Ask About to ask questions and talk to for general conversation. Nice. Ask About Tutorial. The default movement method is click to walk, shown by the footprint icon. The blue in the upper left corner of the icon indicates what the target spot is. Or you can use the arrow keys to move around the screen. You can also ask me about inventory. You can access your inventory by typing inv or i into the text parser. Or you could press tab. The cursor will change to the eye. Click the eye on the items in your inventory to look at them. 
an issue of the Toronto Eye from a few weeks ago. Click the grey... Lupe? Icon at the bottom of the inventory window. The cursor will become a lupe. You can examine some of your inventory items more closely using the lupe. You admire the minute dots that comprise the newspaper's photograph of a round cut diamond. The natural diamond described in the article would be an octahedron, not a faceted specimen. What an embarrassing inaccuracy. You can close the inventory window by pressing tab, the escape key, or enter. You can also examine objects in a room using the lupe. It's just meant to be loop? Okay. Try examining the cupboard to learn more about it. Can we do look at cupboard? The cupboard is massive with a set of double doors with panelling. Open cupboard. Ha ha! You have opened it. It looks like there's something inside the cupboard. If you look cupboard, the game will tell you what the cupboard looks like. If you look in the cupboard, the game will tell you what's inside the cupboard. Search cupboard also works. Look in the cupboard. You see a green hat in the cupboard. Pick up hat. Congratulations, you've completed the tutorial. Open door to leave the tutorial. A note has been added to your notebook. You take the green hat. Well done. Open the door and walk out to leave. Thank you for playing the tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Ah, yes, no click to. Wait, didn't it just say click to? Use door? Okay, other verbs. Open door. If you're ready to leave the tutorial, either use the arrow keys to walk through the door or click the feet icon to the right of the doorway. The room will reset once you leave it. Thank you for playing the tutorial. Okay. Let's actually press slash to resume. Well, I'm pressing diagonal slash. Hmm. Ah, we managed to make it overcome that. Man is fishing. In the forest with his bucket. He is scaling and preparing his fish. It has a diamond. There you are, Nancy. Press enter to advance task. Esk to skip the intro. This is it, what we've been waiting for. Far up north, a fisherman has found a massive diamond in the belly of a fish. Diamonds! This could be a real boon for our mineralogy exhibit. We need something better than those dilettantes over in geology. I want our exhibit to be the talk of the town. It's too bad that we can't spare anyone to head up to the middle of nowhere on such a long shot. You could spare me. Let me go, Professor Plummer. It would be perfect. Everyone else is busy with the new exhibits. While I've just been learning the filing system. That can wait a day or two, couldn't it? Hmm. I'm not usually in the habit of sending unsupervised young ladies into less civilized regions. But as luck would have it, the discovery was made near a lodge, where I'm sure you could stay while you conduct your fieldwork. Yeah, I assume that the placeholder art of the... of Nancy. The man's art looks sort of in the appropriate style, if slightly less detailed than I might expect, but her art especially was, yes, kind of clearly placeholder. You win, Nancy. Get on home. Pack your bags and catch the train up north. Hooray! Thank you so much, Professor.
If you find something that can make a big splash at the museum, who knows? Maybe the university will finally accept you. Oh god. Woman is having trouble being accepted as student at university in oldie days. Shame on us. Shame, society. Good luck, kiddo. I won't let you down. A few hours later. Here's my train. No, it's got a train, it must be a good game. This legitimately happened to Alice Wilson. This is it, my first time out of the city. I'm going to make the most of this trip. I can't wait to see the rocks of Northern Ontario. Bye bye big city, hello big adventure. A few hours later... Sleep, sleep, sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Press enter to advance task. Esk to skip intro. Excuse me, is this seat taken? Not at all. Please have a seat. Evening, ATM machine. Thank you. My name is Kimi... Kimi Kishiro. Where are you headed? Pleased to meet you. I'm Nancy Maple. I'm bound for a town called Crimson. Oh my. You've got some hours yet. I should know. That's where I'm going. I'm a clerk from the Royal Canadian Museum. As says we know, Australians come from Australia, so Canadians must come from Canada. My boss sent me to check out the diamond claim up there. I hadn't heard of that discovery. Then again, I don't pay much attention to the news. It's a very strange story. Up by Crimson, a fish swallowed a huge diamond, and a fisherman caught it, sliced it open, and there it was, this spectacular sparkling gem. Can you imagine? I jumped at the chance to investigate. This is my first time out of the city. I couldn't be more excited. Where will you be staying when we get to Crimson? A place called Crimson Lodge. Ah, I'm staying at Crimson Lodge. I'm a birder. I hear that there are nesting colonies of cormorants up there. That's what I want to see. And I wouldn't mind seeing the Sulocks. Presumably they're some sort of lakes. While I'm in the area, I'd love to see the big ships up close. Wonderful. What can be travel? Oh, we can be traveling companions. Blah. Reading hard. I'd very much like that. You and Kimmy chat amiably for a while. As the day wears on, the rhythm of the train moving over the tracks and the monotony of the scenery lulls you into a deep sleep. The conductor announces, announces, Crimson, this stop. Nancy, it's time to go, but where's our, where's our overhead luggage? Ah, thank you. Ah. Uh, Oh no! Where's my luggage? Ah, oh, hail Vama! So this this Vama, um, Miss uh, Miss Maple Mystery, Vama who just chatted was the one that suggested it to me. You you may thank her for the word of mouth. Oh no! You think it's the kind of lock like for raising ships up and down, not lock as in the Scottish locks? Fair enough. Oh no! Where's my luggage? It's not here. There's no luggage left at all. My field kit's in there. What am I going to do? The train will be leaving soon. We have to leave now. Ah! I had no idea anyone else was still on the train. Hello there. Hello. I didn't notice you on the train. Isn't that funny? Not really, I was in the first class car. I'm here to see the nesting cormorants. Is that why you're here? Cormorants? Is that some type of rodent? Ah, oh, and the sign actually says crimson. Ah, uh, excuse me, folks. I was sent to pick up one person from the station. A European fellow, expert mineralogist on assignment, hired by the federal government on loan from Antwerp. 
I wasn't told he'd be bringing secretaries, wives, and girlfriends. <laughs> you see, now, Vama, this, this I can understand being some, uh, some sexism writing. <laughs> oh, God. Um. Ah. I'm sorry for the confusion, sir. Jack? I'm sorry for the confusion, Jack. But we don't know this man. My name is Nancy Maple, and my friend here is Kimi Kishiro. I was sent from the Royal Canadian Museum to investigate the diamond claim. And I'm here to see the nesting cormorants. We're both going to stay at the lodge and go about our business. Do you know which way it is from here? I surely would know which way it is because that's where I drove out from. But, I'm sorry to tell you ladies, the lodge has been closed to the public for months. Haven't you heard? My boss, Mr. Rickards, or Richards, probably Richards, is getting on. He's done with the lodging business. All he wants is peace and quiet, but then this whole diamond fiasco starts up. Folks, all up in arms. He's not pleased at all, I can tell you. This gentleman is here on the government's orders. Mr. Richards can't do much about that. But you two? Well, that's unfortunate. But you only have yourself to blame. For being uninformed. <laughs> wow, he's abrasive. Let's be off, Jack. Good evening, ladies. The thing is... Ain't no one's coming by here at this time of night. And the nearest accommodation is the lodge, which is a few hours away, by automobile. Even still, look here, I'll drive you ladies up to the lodge for the night. Tomorrow morning I'll bring you back so that you can catch the train. As it is, Mr. Richards is going to be peeved about housing unexpected guests. Even more than he already is. His sister's come up from the city to stake her claim. And she's brought a lawyer to boot. In capitals? I wonder if that's meant to imply meaning for later. Come along now! Ah, huh. oh, sure, I'll get those for you. Surely the gentlemanly thing to do would be to offer to carry Kimmy's bag. Sir, your trunks arrived a few days ago. Boy, they are heavy. Press enter to advance text. Ah, yes, of course. My, it sure gets dark here at night. Lucky for you, I've made this trip many times. Used to be folks would come out here in the summers for recreation. And before my time, settlers came to this area in hopes of building lives for themselves. But once the mines were used up, there wasn't much reason for them to stay. The soil isn't that good. Have you seen any cormorants? <laughs> At least she's in character. I'm hoping to see some. Yes, they nest up on the cliffside. Stay away though, they don't like being disturbed. P I'm here to see the cormorants. Please don't go near the cormorants, woman. They don't like being disturbed, particularly during nesting season, which happens to be right now. So if you're wild about them, leave them alone. You'd do more harm than good. Besides, tomorrow morning I'll be taking you right back to the train station. You won't have time to go looking for them. Have any other diamonds been found around here? First of all, no way to know if that rock even came from around here. I've lived here for years and haven't ever seen any. So I know for a fact that it didn't come from these parts. They say a man cut it out of the belly of a fish. The diamond could have come from anywhere. You folks are wasting your time, I'm sorry to say. Who cares about shiny rocks? Ain't no use to nobody. We'll see about that. Your travel-weary companions resist your attempts at chit-chat. It seems that Kimmy and Albert have fallen asleep. Although in the almost complete darkness, it is hard to tell. Stop cormoranting about the cormorants. It's impossible for Jack to hear you from the back seat above the cacophony of the engine and the automobile rattling over the rough country road. You decide it would be best not to distract him further. Here we are. Wow, it's spectacular. You know what? I almost don't mind having more bodies in the lodge. It feels not so empty, like old times. Make yourself at home while you're here. Thank you, Jack. 
Welcome to Crimson Lodge. Miss Kishiro? Miss Maple? Your bedroom is upstairs, at the end of the hall on the right. The bedroom across the hall from you. That's Mr. Richard's suite. Try to keep quiet and stay out of his way, won't you? He shares the suite with Margot. She's his lady... She is his lady friend. Me and Corvus are sharing the bedroom with the two pink beds, right next to yours. Albert demanded the use of my bedroom, so that's where he is. Dunno why he was so insistent, but the customer is always right. That's the smallest bedroom. And... Ugh. Beg pardon. And wasn't really meant for guests. Nessa's room is across the hall from Albert. Stay away from her if I was you. After I get the luggage upstairs, I'm going to start some supper. Wouldn't do to have you starve. Why don't you explore the lodge a little? Talk to the others. Most importantly, stay out of my hair. I'm a busy man. Though not literally, of course. His hair, not the busyness. And if you want to shower tonight, use the upstairs bathroom near the stairs. It's pink, you can't miss it. Hmm, I wonder if Nat's still here. How many places have I got to set at the table tonight? I'm going to my room. You and Kimmy head upstairs to your bedroom. You don't have any luggage to unpack, but you hang your hat and coat on the footboard of your bed and consider yourself settled in. I'm surprised there isn't like a coat rack or... Anyway. To move Nancy, you can click the feet icon to your target destination. Or you can use the arrow keys. Yep, we had that in the tutorial. I should talk to everyone and get to know them a little better before dinner. Your notebook will tell you what you need to do to progress through the game. Type notebook or N when you need to refer to it. When you have lots of notes, click the arrow buttons or press the arrow keys to scroll through the notebook. Essential objectives that must be completed to progress the game are marked with stars. Seeing as I've lost my luggage, I don't have much with which to amuse myself before dinner. Perhaps if I take a look around, time will pass a bit faster. Type look into the text parser is a good way to get your bearings. Look. This is the bedroom you're sharing with Kimmy. A pair of twin beds and matching nightstands are set against the east wall. Kimmy has claimed the bed closest to the fireplace. A clever move on her part, as summer nights are still chilly this far north. Kimmy is here. Talk to Kimmy. I've never been to a place like this before, and I'm excited to explore. I love meeting new people. Yes, you are the inquisitive type, aren't you? Jack did invite you to introduce yourself to everyone after all. It's only polite. I certainly am. Would you like to join me? No, thank you. I'm exhausted. The bumpy ride from the train station left me frazzled. I'm looking forward to some peace and quiet. Before dinner. I can take a hint. I'll leave it be. Sorry that you won't be able to stay at the lodge and see those nestling cormorants. A note has been added to our notebook. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? I like to live life one day at a time. The notebook will track main objective progress. You can also ask characters about different topics. You must specify who you are talking about and what you would like to ask them about. Try ask Kimmy. I was going to say, uh, my instinct was to go ask Kimmy about cormorants or just ask about birds. Talked to Kimmy. Check. Talk to everyone in the lodge. Kimmy, Margaret, Albert, Nessa, Corvus, Nathan, Ethan, and Jack. Ask Kimmy about cormorants. I've heard there were nesting cormorants in this region. Nowadays, they are rare. Fishermen kill them because they think the birds eat the fish. But it isn't true, the poor things. Type help or H to open the help window. There are a list of parser shortcuts to simplify using the parser. OD is shorthand for open door. Look. It's a bit... It's a bit off-putting that the, uh... The music has disappeared. This is the northern end of the upstairs hallway. The left door leads to the master bedroom. The right door leads to the room you share with Kimmy. An impressive oil painting is mounted here. 
You don't see anything else noteworthy. Look at painting. A masterful oil painting frame and hung at the end of the upstairs hallway. The plaque reads L. Harris. Open west door? I wonder if it's actually understanding west or if it's just doing whichever door I'm closest to. No, it does understand. Nice. This is the master bedroom. Mr. Richards shares it with Margot. You feel a little weird invading their private space. There is a wardrobe and nightstands to the left and right of the bed. There are two doors in the southern wall. Hmm. Oh? Oh, when you're mostly behind an object so you would not be able to see yourself, it turns clear. Okay. Look in chest. The trunk is locked. Look in closet. Walk closer to the cupboard that you would like to open. Maybe it's getting confused between this one and the one they described as being a walk-in closet? I think they are. Yes. The wardrobe is empty. Uh, open bathroom door? Look. An ensuite bathroom. What a luxury. And it does have mirror physics. Look, we have a reflection. We're not a vampire. For all that we may be soulless. Still, there doesn't actually seem to be anything here. Can I get nice and close to this door and just say open door? Yes. Uh, look. The boudoir transports you to Fin de Sil Sickle? Paris. It's shiny, opulent, perhaps slightly tacky, and very, very pink. A mirrored vanity is the focal point of the room. Exotic perfumes hover in intensely localized cloud in intensely localized clouds that you can almost see. Every movement stirs air currents that bring new scents to your nose. It's pronounced something like fan de siècle. Okay. The powder compact, a powder compact, is on the vanity. There is a pretty, pretty blonde woman in a fashionable dress. Uh, talk to Margaret. Hello there. It's nice to meet you. My name is Nancy Maple. It must be fun trying to account for all the synonyms. Mm. A pleasure to meet you, Madmo. A pleasure to meet you, Mademoiselle. I am Margot. Welcome to Crimson Lodge. How long will you be staying with us? I'm only here tonight. Unfortunately, I was. Oh, I'm only here tonight. Unfortunately, for stop. I was sent here by the Royal Canadian Museum on assignment. But Jack says I'm due to leave on the train tomorrow, according to Mr. Richards' witches. Hmm, I see. I'm sorry we won't be getting to know each other better. A note about... A note has been added to your notebook. Was it N? Okay, we've talked to Kimmy and Margot. We still need Albert, Nessa, Corvus, Nathan, Ethan, and Jack. What's the poster? A dark-haired woman in crimson dress kisses a middle-aged man with a comb-over at a dinner table. You're not sure what this Art Nouveau poster is advertising, as it's French. 
Okay. Do do do. Press escape to open the main menu for more options. You can save or load your game, adjust game speed, and more. Sure, save game. Stream. Open door. Look. This is the bedroom Jack is sharing with Corvus. Judging from the crate haphazardly filled with clothes, he didn't get much notice regarding his new living arrangements. There is a large dresser set against the back wall containing many straw dr small drawers. You also see a low coffee table, a writing desk, a bookcase, a plush armchair, and a pair of beds. Kitty cat. Hello, kitty cat. Does this also do mirror? It also does mirror mechanics. Still, there's no one here and our current quest is to talk to people, so... Type I or tab to open your inventory. You can look at and examine your inventory in this window. You can choose between the default graphical inventory or a text-based inventory in the main menu. So here's more door. Open door. No people. Talk to... I've already forgotten his name. Man. Hello, Mr. Respau. How are you settling in? Please, miss. I am busy at the moment and cannot chat. Mr. Respa is unpacking and doesn't want to chat right now. Oh, we went the wrong side of the door. Type slash to pause the game. The game also pauses when the parser inventory or menu windows are open. No, no, no. I also instinctively want to... um treat this like command prompt and be able to like scroll up and down for my previous commands. If, if I'm going to use a text parser, my instinct is to treat it like a text, well, like a command line. Again, no people, so not what we're after. Look, they're, they're always going to invent a better idiot, and I'm happy to be the better idiot. When you think they've you've made something foolproof, they come up with a better fool. Still no people. So this looks like it's a balcony rather than a set of stairs. Yeah. Can we also come out the front? My goodness, it's dark as anything out there. I have no need... <laughs> don't touch it! You don't know where it's been! I have no need to go out this way right now. I hear voices near this doorway. I wonder what they're talking about. Hmm? Oh, maybe it means this doorway. Listen at door. You don't hear any voices. Okay, what if we try and go to the other side? <sighs> it's a cloak room. Oh. Open door. My goodness, yeah, no. Don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. Okay, what if we try and go in? No people. Also no people. And is that big thing also a door? Door. 
Yes. Whoa there. I'm busy cooking up dinner. Get out from under my feet. Talk to man. So that we can trigger our talk to everyone. Jack moves from stove to counter and back again. Whipping up what is sure to be a fine meal. I think that's meant to be a semicolon, but it looks like just a badly written eye. Like, I look at that and I see merely, not he's cooking up a fine meal and so he is too busy to talk to you right now. No, 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 I want to open door. Open door. I hear voices near this doorway. I wonder what they're talking about. Hello, fat man. Look. The conversation... No, the conservatory. Not a solarium, a conservatory. Is a stunning showpiece of a room. Surely the expense and trouble to bring this many panes of glass this far north must have been enormous. You see a husky older man wearing beaten up denim overalls. And a tall, broad man with dark hair and a fringed jacket. Talk to East Man. That achieves little effect. Talk to West Man? You can't do that. What if we just talk to Man? Because there's two of them, though. How do I know which one I'm talking to? Hello, my name is Nacy Marple, and I'm a mineralogist on assignment from the Royal Canadian Museum. I'm Evan Richards. Look, you and your friend can stay the night, but tomorrow morning Jack will put you on the train back to the city. But my boss sent me up here on behalf of the Royal Canadian Museum. I'm a mineralogist. I have too much on my plate as it is. What with my sister and that lawyer, of hers. One mineralogist is already too many. A note has been added to your workbook, your notebook. Please, Mr. Richards, allow me to stay for just a little while. And Kimmy too. Me, Margaret, and Jack are all that I want here in the lodge. You seem like a nice girl, but all this brouhaha is making my headache. I'm sorry to disappoint you. How do you do? Ooh, he's Indian. Hello, Miss Maple. I'm, well, thank you. My name is Nathan Cardinal, a family friend of Evans. How do you know him? I don't actually know Mr. Richards at, the, at all. The Royal Canadian Museum sent me here on assignment. I am to survey the land and find out if there are diamonds here. A discovery like that would surely make a splash when the museum opens to the public. You're wasting your time, I'm sorry to say. My family has lived in this area for many, many years and never found any diamonds here. Small red garnets are rather plentiful, but of little value. Okay, so we still need Corvus and Jack. That was a pretty rapid conversation switch. Well, interpreted my talk talk to man as talking to both men. I think. So it talked to one, then the other. Okay. It's dark outside, so don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. A stately man cave. Don't touch it, you don't know where it's been. So far everything has been nice and Euclidean. Well, this is also going to say don't touch it, you don't know where it's been? Yeah.
But now I feel like we've explored the whole space and are being told we can't go anywhere. Hmm. Ah, no, here we go. Hmm, what have we here? The man and woman abruptly stopped talking to each other and busied themselves with the almonds in front of them. Look. The parlour is fussily decorated with elaborate wallpaper and a cushy carpet. A cut crystal bowl of Jordan almonds sits on the low table. There is a fancy pair of armchairs and a camelback sofa. A small bronze sculpture stands on an ornate cupboard. You see a stern older woman... <laughs> you get left for hinting all the time. In Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a somulous sea. Yes. You see a stern older woman with grey streaking her brown hair, and a tall man, Natty, with brown hair and a striped vest. I'm supposed to talk to them, and thankfully they are man and woman, so... Talk to woman. Good evening, my nam name... Nam. My name is Nancy Maple. Nice to meet you. I'm Nissa Crab, Evan's older sister. What on earth are you doing here? Are you another one of Evan's gold-digging girlfriends? Not at all. I am a diamond-digging mineralogist. At least I hope to be. The government has sent a professional to handle that. Stay out of his way. Uh, how are you, Nessa? I'll be happy when I can get back to civilization, reaping the benefits of this incredible windfall. And talk to man. How do you do? My name is Nancy Maple. Hello, Miss Maple. Yeah, that's very... Hello, Miss Maple. My name is Corvus Shaw. I'm Miss Nessa Krabs, Nee Richards, lawyer. She is Evan's older sister. He gestures to the woman seated on the sofa. Once diamonds have been found on this land, I will ensure Mrs. Crab gets the share she is owed. You sound pretty sure that there are diamonds here. Of course, the prospectors have looked everywhere else. That means the diamonds must be here. <laughs> The game has auto-saved. You hear Jack calling supper. It is time to head to the dining room. We've accidentally walked behind the door again. I seem quite good at doing that. Oh, and we have music again. My goodness, what a lot of company we have tonight. So I think that was up to uh, that was on me for Miss Um misunderstanding which door it was trying to say I hear people talking out, out of. I thought it meant the door on the left, not the door at the far end of the hallway, at the very back of the hallway. My goodness, what a lot of company we have tonight. Oh no, that was meant to be the French girl. Hmm, this is giving me indigestion. This food is giving me indigestion. You're welcome to leave, in fact, please do. Ha, you'd like that, wouldn't you? I'm not going anywhere until we find out if the diamond came from this land, and if it did, you'd better believe I'm getting my share. That's what you think. Yes, that is what we think. That's what I'm here to ensure. Heh, <laughs> how long is that gonna take? I'll begin my field work tomorrow morning. Crimson used to be a garnet mining town. Yeah, but forget about visiting the mines. They blasted the mine entrances shut years ago when they closed it down, unless the fish has a pickaxe broke into the mine, swallowed a diamond, and then dove back out into the river. Mm, yes, I see. Never been there, couldn't tell you where it is. Mr. Richards gets a sour look on his face and digs back into his meal. He looks like he's done with this conversation. Um, Margaret, what a lovely necklace you're wearing. Thank you, mademoiselle. Monsieur Evans gave it to me. I'm very fond of it. A cheap trinket. Misshapen... Paste? Misshapen paste gem in a cheap setting. It's a white garnet, not glass. My Richard, he found it here in crimson, didn't you, Monsieur? Never mind, Margot. No one wants to hear about that. 
My sapphire brooch. Now this is a real piece of jewellery. Bought it myself. I think they're both quite nice. Nathan, I read in the newspaper that most of the land up here was once parceled out to settlers. Is that how this plot became the property of Mr. Richard's father? About 50 years ago, the land was annexed by the government. Various treaties were signed in exchange for preservation of our hunting and fishing rights and financial compensation. The promises described in those treaties have not been honoured, by the way. Settlers claimed... Settlers came, mines were dug, and Crimson was prosperous for a time. Eventually, the mines were exhausted, the settlers abandoned their homesteads, and Crimson became a ghost town. Only Mr. Richards and his family have remained. Yeah, we like the peace and quiet. Paste means glass faux jam? See, I hear paste, I think cut and paste, or maybe like tomato paste? I was not aware of the, uh... Jewelry meaning. Yeah, yeah. We like the peace and quiet. We liked it. I always hated it. I sure do miss the peace and quiet. Nessa and Corvus are the first to excuse themselves from the table. They head out to the bar for a nightcap. Albert follows them for a snifter of brandy and one of his cigars. Jack clears away the dishes and goes to the kitchen to wash up. We don't know if there's a murder yet, Jeffo, but it's it's a where did so far it's a where did the diamond come from mystery. After eating a minuscule portion of supper, Margot heads upstairs to draw a bath. Kimmy heads upstairs to get ready for bed. Nathan and Evan you dye a glass with different metal oxides and pour it into a mold. It imitates gems. Dye a glass. Okay. Uh, Nathan and Evan remain at the table, lingering over their desserts. Well, that was a lovely meal. Yes, Jack does a good job. Usually I wait for Jack to come clear the dishes so I can put off getting up. Looks like he's taking longer than usual to clear up, what with all the extra guests. Uh, I feel a little responsible for his extra workload. Maybe I should go give him a hand. He'd appreciate that. About time someone made themselves useful around here. So what, we're supposed to go to the... Oh, oh, I don't have... Hello, do I... Oh, I'm, I'm in talk mode, okay. Why can't I... Get up? Stand up. Okay, now I can walk again. I... I feel extremely guilty, but... Do dishes. You help Jack wash the dishes. Thank you, miss. Lots more dishes than usual. Happy to help. Now I've got to see to Miss... Mrs. Crab and Mr. Shaw in the bar. Have to make sure they don't drink us dry. And of course, I need to get Mr. Richards his hot toddy. He likes a soothing drink before bed. And I don't want to keep Margaret waiting. Ugh. Forget about the last one, won't you? Hmm? The game has auto-saved. Help Jack with dishes. I did help Jack. Eaves drop on the boudoir door. With an extreme amount of stars. So, close door, and then listen at door. You don't hear any voices. This was our room, so it's unlikely to be the correct one, but brute force.
not change directory, but close door. Hmm. I don't remember any of the other downstairs room being bedrooms. There was the room where the sister and her lawyer was. There was the coat room. There was a bathroom. There was a pool room. There was a storage room. Excuse me. Nessa and Corvus stopped talking and pointedly avoid looking in your direction. They're not very friendly, are they? Didn't it say bedroom? Did I misread? I probably misread. Well, that's boudoir, isn't it? That means bedroom, doesn't it? No! Okay, so I've been living under false pretenses for my life. Ah! It, it means both things. A woman's private sitting room or salon in a furnished residence, usually being between the dining room and the bedroom, but can also refer to a woman's private bedroom. Okay. Well, they'll always make a better idiot. So they probably mean here. But there's no one in there now. That said, we can listen at this door. Father... Father's will has to be around here somewhere. Things would be so much easier if we could just find it. If the will can't be found, we might have to proceed as planned and take our chances. That little gold digging hussy complicates things. But I'm dealing with her in my own way. We'll talk about that another time. Good night, Mr. Shaw. Good night, ma'am. Okay. Nessa can't find... Yeah, please, please go away, note thingy. Nessa can't find a will. Nessa is dealing with Margot. But this still doesn't seem to have counted as the thing. Was it the solarium? No. Go to the dining room, which doesn't have a check. Help Jack with dishes. Does have a check, so maybe it wants me to go to the dining room? Like, I am here. I've been here. We had dinner. Talk to man. Thank you for the dinner, Mr. Richards. Didn't you have enough chatter at dinner? Jack's dinner tasted as good as it smelled. He grows a lot of the ingredients himself. It's quite impressive. Oh, I didn't even notice you were here. I'm blind. Hmm. Can we talk? No, what was it? Ask Richard about staying no about diamond i'm not from round here you mark oh, it isn't from round here sorry mark my words this whole business is just a waste of everyone's time and what was your name mr uh 
Well, if I do ask about Diamond, will it ask the person that I'm closer to? And then I am forgiven for not remembering his name? No, it will not. Oh, there we go. I have my doubts that it was truly found on this land. And even if it were, who's to say that there is enough to mine? You're going to definitely stream this at some time, but waiting for it to be done? Fair enough. It would be like those garnets all over again. Talk to everyone. Tick, 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 tick. Kimmy, Kimmy, Margo, Margo, Albert, Albert, Nessa, Nessa. Corvus, Corvus, Nathan, Nathan, Evan, Evan, Jack. No, I'm missing Jack. Really? I did do this one, right? Yes. Oh? The door is locked. Hmm. Knock on door. You knock lightly on Albert's door. Leave me alone. Fair enough. Kimmy is asleep. Listen at door. You can hear muffled noises in the boudoir. Ha! This was the... Anyway. But the speakers are too far from the door to hear them clearly. Perhaps you could listen at the door with an item that would help. So we've got to go pick up a glass from the from the kitchen, from the kitchenette. Open cupboard. Look in cupboard. Pots and pans. Decorative plates, a mug, and some planer mugs. Well, maybe a mug. Let's see if there's a glass, though. Open cupboard. Look in cupboard. A saucepan. Open cupboard. Look in cupboard. Uh, 
has a pipe that drains. Well, is that a cold box? Refrigerator. Fridge. Okay. It's called a fridge when it's probably should be a cold box. But anyway, you open it. Or an ice box. Actually, let's try ice box. The ice block is rock solid and frosty. The ice box is already open. Good. The ice block is rock solid and frosty. And we can't walk away without closing it because we're a nice person. Uh, take mug. Okay. You've made a note to add cold box as a synonym. Do, do, do. Can we listen at door with mug is our new question. Listen at door with mug. The ceramic mug won't transmit sound well. Perhaps a similar item. Okay, let's go to the bar and see if we can grab a glass. I'm horrible at walking through those doors. <laughs> Why would I want a glass? Smash mug and make shiv. A cup? Look. This is a cozy bar, decorated in warm hues of crimson and coral. A trio, trio, a trio of stools are stationed in front of an elaborately curved bar. There is an oversized armchair and a striped love seat. I see glasses. What else could be useful? We don't have a stethoscope. Um. Like a phone, an ear horn? Ooh. Beg pardon, an ear horn? But we haven't seen anyone that's like so old that they have an ear horn. Mm -hmm. There are glasses in this room as well. The glass panelled cupboard has some nice porcelain dinnerware. No. What about here? Take glass. Maybe I can find more versatile drinking glasses in the kitchen. But we've looked. Look in sync. That doesn't seem to work. Open drawer. Look in drawer. Who keeps cups in a drawer like that, though? Hmm. Maybe close cupboard. Maybe there's a difference between these two cupboards and those ones. Open cupboard. There we go. Those look like glasses. Good thinking, Agent 47. 
Uh, take glass. You take a drinking glass from the cupboard. Unlike the drinking glasses in the bar, you're allowed to take one of these. We understand why we would want this glass. Oh, that makes me want to uh, find a certain voice line. Give me a sec to see if I still have it. I might have gotten rid of fiddling with them. Mm. Yeah, I think I got rid of them when I had that hard disk crash. Which is sad, but it's the way things are. Okay. There was a time when I did a lot of work to extract all of the uh, WAV files from... From, um... From Laura Bow, and so I had each individual voice track as a separate WAV file, but no more. I'd have to go through an elaborate series of steps again. Anyway, we have the glass. We can go use glass on listen to door. Listen at door with glass. With the help of the drinking glass, you can hear a conversation behind the boudoir door. Let's have a look. Oh, Monsieur, you are wonderfully helpful. I cannot thank you enough. I do what I can. Ah, I can never reach that spot. Mon Dieu! Sorry about that. But you know we gotta go slow. The pamphlet says so, right? It does. More's the pity, but I think it's working. You hear some muffled cries. Shh, you've got to keep it down, especially tonight with so many ears around. You're right, of course, though you know I cannot help it sometimes. This must remain our little secret. The voices go silent for a little while. All right, I think we're done here. I've got a skedaddle before Mr. Richards finishes his drink and goes to bed. Of course, mercy, Jack. Your days and nights are so very long? Maybe she means here. Um, you've got that right, and I'm not done- Oh no, he, she does mean his, as in he never gets to stop working. Having all these folks in the lodge, I've got to work that much harder. I'm sure they will be gone soon. Everything will be back to normal. I hope so. Bonne nuit. Jack, good night. You hear footsteps coming towards the door. Thinking quickly, you duck behind the big blue chest. <laughs> Well done. After waiting a few minutes, Margot leaves her boudoir and heads downstairs. You manage to sneak across the hall to your own bedroom. What a long and intriguing night this has been. Well done. Keep up the good work. I'm exhausted. What an interesting place this is. Too bad Kimmy and I have to leave on the train. Later that night. Thanks for playing my demo. Uh, if there are any bugs, please tell me. Well, you've been here and you've seen the ones that, that I've seen. Feedback at thecrimsondiamond.com. Although the at kind of looks more like a smiley face. Design. Oh, yes. Original music by Dan, Chris, etc. Special thanks to these people. Beta testers. These people. Thank you for playing. Controlled crash to desktop. Okay. I like that. There were parts where the music cut out and it probably shouldn't ever not have music. Um, there are a couple of cases of trying to pick up, like, the glasses there where there were... Um, like, I know the kind of item I want. I know the, the trope. The trope is use glass to listen at door. And so I went to multiple places with glasses, and they just say, no, you're not allowed these glasses. Why would I want some glasses? You can't fit the glasses in your purse. <laughs> Nancy would never take these glasses. And then you find the correct set of glasses, and it lets you. 
Um, yeah. I really wanted to be able to play that line from Laura Bow where she's like, the spade is stuck to the ground. It's too heavy. She wouldn't want to get her hands dirty. What use would a shovel be? It goes on for like 15 seconds for the... the Obviously, the writer got really, really sick of writing the excuses for why you can't take items. And that one single interaction just has like a, a paragraph long diatribe about why you aren't allowed to use that shovel. Anyway, I look forward to seeing more of this game in time. That will do for now.